Greetings, everyone. So, Star Wars has been coming out with a lot of trailers of things, I'm finding out now. Um, so, here we have first official look at Star Wars Andor, Cassian Andor. Um, so, this is going to be a prequel to Rogue One, which I loved. I loved Rogue One. I thought it was great. Um, and I enjoyed Solo. I like the anthology movies. I, I really think that they, that they were a lot of fun. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. It's a film that connected new audiences with the... the oh, and he's the executive fans. producer, too. It was a bittersweet feeling, you know, in the premiere. Knowing that it was just one film. But then magic happens, right? As you can see, we're getting ready. We're building stages, we're rehearsing, we're training, we're trying costumes, we're doing everything to make sure we do the best show. I'm really excited having the chance to explore Cassian. It's really fun to go on a set that is emulating something you like so much. The enormity of this is like doing a big feature film. It's very cinematic. For me, that's where the excitement is. 12 episodes, 12 scripts, over 200 named cast members, over 6,000 crowd people, a lot of creatures that come in from the creature department. We treat this exactly like we would have would have filmed. There is no difference in our approach. Every creature and droid that we've been building has the same care, level of attention, to detail. It's the previous films. It's huge. It's thrilling, but also it's wonderfully challenging. There's tons of possibilities to explore. It is the building of a revolution. Okay, so, alright, so this one, it feels like, because I guess Cassian Andor, so he's like rebel intelligence, right? So this is going to, so of course we're back in the Empire, we're back in the Galactic Civil War. Um, so this is probably going to take place before, or between Solo and obviously before Rogue One. How soon before Rogue One? I don't know. There's 12 episodes, which doesn't have to happen. I mean, they could happen concur consecutively, or they could be broken up over a space of time. I don't know. Um, and who knows? I mean, they're making one season, obviously. They're, they're in production for that, or pre-production at least. Um... So I guess we'll have to see how successful it is if it gets lit for a second season. I mean, I'm guessing it'll probably get lit for maybe one or two seasons. Possibly three, but that might be pushing it. It just depends on what all kinds of stories that they can tell. But yeah, it'll probably be an espionage, spy sort of thing. Of course, there's going to be action. We could see from the concept art things that are going to be like speeder bike chases. Um or or starfighter bits going on there, hiding uh hiding out so probably a lot of high high tense moments um they're going to be figuring out what's going on in the empire and it'll probably my guess is lead directly into rogue one when they find out that there's a planet killer we'll probably see we might even see galen erso for an episode um back when he's probably prompting bodhi rook to uh to be the pipe to deliver the message to deliver the message to say i need to see saul guerrera we may see saul guerrera in this um because again he's the extremist movement of the rebel alliance during that time so he might be in there as well so that'll be neat to see if if that happens things that are leading up to rogue one so that should be a lot of fun because the Rebel Alliance is, is a great time to 
to explore as well. Um, it would also be neat if they could resurrect Big's Dark Lighter in there. Because in the deleted scenes of A New Hope, um, you know, he says that he's going to desert and because he was like at the academy or whatever. I don't remember what, exactly what that was from the deleted scenes. But he said he was going to desert and he was going to make a break for the Rebel Alliance. So we might even see him maybe in an Imperial aspect. That's just kind of, that's, that's just a theory. That's a guess. I have no idea. But it would be cool to see that. Because Biggs Darklighter had that sort of interesting backstory of, of uh, helping Luke to see that there's bigger stuff going on in the galaxy. And he's just, you know, he's, he's Luke, Luke Skywalker is living vicariously through whatever stories Biggs Darklighter can provide him. You know, he's his buddy who's gone off into the world to this proverbial big city. And then anytime he comes back, Luke is just begging for stories, you know. So, um... I think it'd be cool if he shows up, uh, deep faked or or whatever like that. I mean, it's it's there, um, so you know, it's about the storytelling really. When you're a Star Wars character, it stops being about you, and you be kind of become this big player in this larger thing. Kind of like how Ahsoka. T I know this is kind of long, and the video was really short, but I hope you're still listening. But anyway. Uh, kind of like how Ashley Eckstein says, Ahsoka is not really my character. It's not me. It's a character that I'm playing. And then when Rosario Dawson takes up that role, um, you know, it's kind of like it's, the, the character becomes beyond just you personally. But it becomes about the character. It becomes about the bigger saga. So that's what I feel about deep faking uh, actors and resurrecting them and stuff like that is it kind of becomes about the saga as a whole rather than the individual actor. It's different from Back to the Future, too, back from those days when um, when they had to have a different actor actually impersonate the character of um, McFly, Marty's dad, escaping me. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, that should be a lot of fun to see the casting Andor thing. Man, we're just... I, we're going to get either saturated with Star Wars or hopefully it'll just kind of go back to, you know, back to back to back and we'll you know, just have something to continuously go like that. I hope they don't release it all at once. I kind of don't think they would. But um, we've got the different series maybe that will be coming out in order so we've got something to look forward to as time goes on so we don't have such a big drought of, uh, of Star Wars like waiting an entire year or entire 10 months from the end of Mandalorian Season 1 to Season 2. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say on that. So may the Force be with you.